AC is blowing hot air. Let O'Reilly Auto Parts help bring back the cool this summer. While you may need to eventually service your AC unit, get immediate relief with Interdynamics R134A refrigerant with leak sealer. Buy two, get one free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Blog Talk Radio. This is True Capitalist Radio. True Capitalist Radio. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. The badass of business. Give him capitalism or give him death. That's it. Period. Broadcasting from his Skyline Office Studios in beautiful downtown Austin, Texas. You sound fruitier than a box of Fruit Loops, for Christ's sake. And now, he'll take it from here. Your host, the prognosticator of prognosticators... The man they call Ghost. (laughs) What's going on, folks? And thank you for tuning in with me to this very special edition of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. And of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. This is episode number 302. 302 for the folks that are keeping track of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. And before we get into anything else, I'd like for everybody to please spread it around like wildfire. And let everybody know that True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house, and we are live every Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Blogtalkradio.com slash ghost is the official website of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. That is blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. And if you haven't already done so, folks, please follow me on Twitter the Twitter name to follow is Politics Ghost. All one word, no underscores. Politics Ghost is the name to follow. Anyway, folks, it is 4th of July. Happy birthday to America. This is 240 years of America's existence, folks. And uh, to be honest with you, we're not in the very best place in America as it pertains to the social landscape, as it pertains to the political landscape, and definitely the economic landscape of this country. And that's why this time in American history is so important that we understand what America is and not be such uh, pessimists, if you will. Now, there is a lot to be pessimistic about. Don't get me wrong. you got these long-haired, liberal, bedwetting hippies that are literally dumbing down, stupefying the country, and turning us into a backworld, backwoods, third-world, wannabe socialist, quasi-communist piece of crap. But we as America needs to understand. We need to emphasize why we are celebrating July 4th today. We are celebrating it because we believe in freedom. We believe in the freedom of the that is accorded to us by our Creator that have been materialized in document form via the Constitution. And I, on this show, try to emphasize the freedom of speech. I try to overemphasize that, folks, because we got political correctness encroaching upon our speech every single goddamn day I wake up in the morning, for Christ's sake, and I'm sick and tired of it. And that's why I'm saying, folks, even on this July 4th holiday, where we're supposed to be celebrating America's independence, we've got totalitarians, leftists, and other American haters trying to reign on the parade of us patriotic Americans who are celebrating this day, who will love this day, who appreciate this day. Folks, I don't know if you've been seeing on Twitter. We've had a Twitter trend all day. Hashtag America was never great. Can you believe that? That's actually trending 
on the 4th of July in 2016. Can you believe the socialist leftist rabbit hole we have sucked down, folks? This is why I'm telling you right now, this moment in American history is the most important in our history today. And if you don't believe me, just take a look around you, for Christ's sake, man. Everybody is turning down, uh, turning into, excuse me, a dumbed-down piece of liberal trash who basically get their information from talking heads on a boob tube which don't inform them but suggest to them what to regurgitate whenever they're in damn social circles. And this is what comprises the American electorate in today's America. And that's why, folks, this election is so important. If you're celebrating this holiday, this July 4th, this American independence, well, by God, you better understand that there is two paths right now, right before you in this presidential election. In one path, you've got liberal, leftist, trash, totalitarian garbage. Any reference to Democrats, any reference to career politicians is nothing more, in my personal opinion, and based on the actions of legislation for the past 30 to 40 years, the majority of the bureaucrats in today's American government and all of the Democrats in the Democratic Party are agents of international bureaucratic institutionalism. Why do you think you've got Barack Obama out here trying to sell globalism all over the place, for Christ's sake? I mean, he's trying to use whatever's left in his teleprompting reading skills to try to persuade folks that bureaucratic institutionalization on an international scale is somewhat, I don't know, utopia? I mean, look at what it's done to the world so far, for Christ's sake. What do you think Britannia wanted out of the EU? Why do you think Britannia wanted out of the EU? Now, Italy is calling for a referendum. You've got the Netherlands calling for a referendum. You've got all kinds of different countries calling for a referendum. Because who made these international bureaucrats the damn boss of the world? I mean, what qualifies these bureaucrats to be holier than thou, to wave their fingers in our faces, to dictate policy, laws, taxation on us, sovereign nations? Can somebody explain that? Can we stop I don't care what your goddamn politics is. Why don't you stop and ask yourself that on this 4th of July? Who made these international bureaucratic institutionalists the power authority of the world? By God, nothing more than our own sovereign nation politicians, folks. All right? I'm not kidding around. The people that we have been electing, those that are career bureaucrats, career politicians, have put America in this point today. And that's why, folks, doesn't matter what side of the political spectrum you're lying on at this point in time, if you are voting for a career bureaucrat, if you are voting for a career politician, they are the crux of the problem. They are at the bottom of the problem that we are witnessing today. And that's why you have trends like this ridiculous trend on Twitter. America was never great trending on the fourth goddamn of July. Can you believe this crap? 2016, we're celebrating the fourth of July, and you've got a bunch of leftist, long haired, liberal, bedwetting, hippie trash out here trying to trend this on Twitter today. I cannot believe this crap. I'm telling you this right now, folks. Good God. Anyway, before I get off Keister, because I'm telling you, I'm a little upset. I'm a little angry, for Christ's sake, that the leftists are trying to infringe upon the 4th of July holiday. I am getting reports from people that are uh, being infringed upon, telling, being told to take down their flags on their properties, being told to take down uh, certain patriotic symbols because it may offend certain people, it may offend certain groups of folk, for Christ's sake. Hey, you're an America, asshole. Get used to it. Like it and eat it. You see that American flag? You're going to have to get used to it. If it offends you, get the hell out of here, you stupid piece of trash. Get out. Get out. I can't believe this. Have you all read these reports, folks? 
I'm telling you this right now. People are being told to take down their American flags on Independence Day because it supposedly offends groups of people. In some reports, I read that it offends Muslims, for Christ's sake. How can the American flag offend Muslims if they are in the country, if they are taking advantage of the rewards of the country, and they are living on this land? How can they sit there and be offended by the American flag when they are taking advantage of the American rewards? Can somebody explain that logic to me, for heaven's sake? But you see, this is how these leftists... This is how these liberals have the American mindset right now, folks. This is how they have the general American idiot in this country. Why do you think that we have hashtag America was never great trending on Twitter today on the 4th of July? This is exactly what the liberals have done to us. They have dumbed us down. They have made us believe that we are nothing more than serfs that we have no responsibility for ourselves, we have no idea how to take care of ourselves, and their only solution, our only solution is government. I mean, this is how stupid they've gotten America. And folks, this is all because of our public education system, and who funds the public education system? The taxpayer who works in the public education system, none other than bureaucrats, none other than career bureaucrats. It's no wonder why we're in the position we're in, for Christ's sake. We need to talk about these subject matters on this July 4th if we want to continue the sustenance of our country, if we want to continue to preserve the American way, the American way of life, if we want to preserve freedom, a freedom of speech, to protect our Second Amendment, to protect ourselves, for Christ's sake. These are the things that you need to be thinking about on this July 4th. Because, by God, we have a whole group of people that are trying to take those rights away from us. Uh, they've made a career on attempting to take away those rights away from us. Wake up on this 4th of July holiday, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ, folks. Anyway, look, I didn't want to make this a gloom and doom broadcast, all right? So I'm going to get on to some different subject matters, and once I'm done with those subject matters, I'm going to open up the phone lines today, folks, all right? Free format, 4th of July edition of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast today. And folks, we are in a serious time in American history, and I hope that you take this show serious. If not, well, I can always just go get off this show and go have a party somewhere. I mean, there, there's a party somewhere in Austin, Texas on the 4th of July. I can guarantee you goddamn that. Anyway, folks, let me go ahead and get to some market news. I know that the United States markets are closed for the 4th of July holiday, uh, but the commodities markets are still trading, folks. And I would definitely, I mean, if you haven't looked at the commodities market, I mean, good God, the prognosticator of prognosticators strikes again. But before I start tooting my own horn, let me get to the energy prices for a second, folks, because they took a slight dip uh, in the day's uh, trading. Uh, It was down today, WTI sweet crude, the oil that is consumed by America, it was down 23 cents today, a percentage decrease of 0.47% on the day, closing out WTI sweet crude at $48.76 per barrel of oil. Slight pullback. Uh, In my opinion, uh, the whole uh, volatility of the market was flat in general because of the holiday. And uh, if anything, you saw a little bit of a pullback as it relates to the uh, oil market because people are trying to cash in some of those profits and offset those profits and other uh, higher percentage yields on a shorter-term basis in the markets today. Uh, let's continue on. We got Brent crude oil also flat today, folks, down 25 cents, a percentage decrease of 0.50% on the day, closing out the day at $50.10 per troy ounce, or excuse me, per barrel of oil. Excuse me, I'm getting ahead of myself. That's Brent crude, $50.10 per barrel of oil. Now let's get to the metals, shall we? <laughs> the metals. Let's get to the goddamn metals. Folks, did you see gold today? I mean, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? Gold is up $14.50 today, a percentage increase of 1.08% on the day, 
closing out gold at $1,353.50 per troy ounce of gold. I'm telling you, we're, we're heading there, 1400 I was expecting this last week, for Christ's sake, but uh, once again, we got a helter-skelter market that doesn't know its ass from its elbow anymore. All right, but I'm telling you, what did I say? I've been saying this ever since I came back from this goddamn broadcast. I said that people need to start entertaining uh, gold, silver, oil plays. All right? I even alluded to the fact that if you wanted to make a, a light bit of profit without even having to worry about too much, entertain an ETF, an exchange-traded fund, uh, in correlation with the rise of silver, with the rise of gold, with the rise of oil. And if you would have entertained that particular financial investment any time from when I came back in late March to last week, you'd be majorly profiting, baby. You understand that? You'd be making some capital while everybody out here is looking for capital, while money is scarce out here in America. You understand that? I mean, making money, baby, that's what I do. I'm a capitalist. You understand me? I am not going to let any goddamn government any goddamn entity try to prevent me from carving out my own destiny. You understand that? Carving out my own destiny. So, once again, folks, uh, gold up a percent today, but let me tell you, I told you, and I said it, and I'll continue to say it, that gold will give you a higher money yield. But the, but the, percentage yield, the higher percentage yield on a shorter time span was going to come with silver, and by God, has it come with silver, baby. <laughs> I mean, last week, man, before Brexit, uh, two weeks ago, I should say, I mean, we were at 17 bucks. all right? We were at $17 silver uh, troy ounce prices, all right? Uh, have you looked at the market today, for Christ's sake, all right? Silver up. 82 cents, a percentage increase, get this, all right, a percentage increase on the day-to-day, 4.20% on the day. I mean, good God. I mean, we're up about, what, 15% in the past three or four days, for Christ's sake, 15 to 18%. I mean, where can you get that kind of return, baby? You understand that? I mean, if you would have just entertained a play in silver right now, you'd be on your money, baby. You'd be making cash. Do you understand that? Anyway, silver today is $20.41 per troy ounce of silver. Folks, we were just announcing 17 bucks about two weeks ago, all right? It is now $20.41 per troy ounce. You understand what I'm talking about, folks? I mean, that's percentage increase. That's money. You understand that? You understand that, boy? I mean, the prognosticator of prognosticators strikes again. Now, I'm not going to get too much in depth in the markets because the markets are closed, folks. But uh, as I've stated, uh, you know, when it comes to analyzing the equities and commodities markets, uh, yours truly is the prognosticator of prognosticators. And for all you folks that instead of actually listening to the advice and the pearls that I'm shooting at you people, instead you decide to utilize this show as your own personal vehicle mechanism to troll yours truly or to get your stupid immature rocks off. While, while you're doing that, you've got people that are listening to yours truly, making capital, becoming major capitalists. And here in about 10 years, when you idiots can no longer conduct yourselves in such immature fashion because mommy and daddy are dead, gone, or can no longer afford your useless ass, all right, uh, lo and behold, all right, lo and behold, you're going to be having to shine our shoes, all right? All right, you're going to be shining our shoes. You're going to be shining the capitalist's shoes, boy. So get down on your knees and spit shine that shoe, troll. Bitch on that shoe, boy. you goddamn right. Anyway, folks, uh, let me go ahead and get to the rest of the news. You all heard about uh, the potential vice presidential list that the supposed media is rolling with as it relates to Donald Trump, folks. Uh, one of the new names, uh, Joni Ernst, if you all aren't familiar with who uh, Joni Ernst is, 
Uh, she's a senator out of New Jersey, or excuse me, a, a, a senator out of Iowa, excuse me. Uh, we got, uh, I, I don't really know much about these people. I'm going to be completely honest with you folks. I mean, I really don't know what's going on in the Trump campaign as it relates to vetting and figuring out what a good vice presidential nominee would be. But some of these names I, I never even heard of. Maybe that's the point. Maybe, uh, uh, Donald Trump is trying to pull a page out of uh, George Bush Sr.'s book when he – remember when he had uh, Dan Quayle, that ridiculous, stupid idiot who couldn't even know how to w- spell the word potato? Y'all remember this idiot? Dan Quayle, the vice president uh, during the Bush Sr. administration. This idiot couldn't even spell the word potato. So maybe uh, Donald Trump is going down that Route, I have no goddamn clue, all right? Uh, Ernst, though, Mrs. Er- Joni Ernst, she's a retired National Guard lieutenant and a veteran of the Iraq War. So uh, possibly, uh, you know, you got Trump trying to hit the women demographic, while at the same time this woman has a little bit of uh, military background, so that'll help any kind of potential foreign policy uh, rhetoric that's been coming out of the pundits' mouths as of late. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know. I don't know too much about uh, Joni Ernst. Uh, he also met with Governor Mike Pence of Indiana. I, I'm not too sure about Mike Pence either. I mean, I don't know about these people, all right? And if I don't know too much about them, you think the average everyday schmuck in America is going to know about these people? I mean, I think Trump and the campaign need to take a step back at some of these people that they're vetting. I hope, I sincerely hope they're just doing this to throw off the scent of the mainstream, lamestream media. All right? Another uh, person on the list, uh, Tom Cotton of Arkansas, another military veteran, uh, which apparently there's a lot of Republicans that are hoping that this man uh, is the presidential or vice presidential nominee. All right? I mean, I'm serious. I'm not joking around. And, of course, folks, uh, one of the leading candidates that yours truly has been discussing, Newt Gingrich, he's ahead on the list. Uh, The only thing I'm a little hesitant about Newt Gingrich on is that uh, he still may be a little bit connected with the uh, Republican establishment, and uh, he could be co-opted. A Napa guy knows not to judge a man by his car's multicolor paint job or absence of modern gadgetry. Who cares if it's technically old enough to vote and the windows are powered by the strength of your left arm? Your monthly payment is zero, and it'll stay that way. Because with over 400,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, you can keep anything on the road. She may not be pretty, but she's all yours. That's Napa know-how. Or possibly he could co-op Trump into doing some uh, ridiculous foreign policy shenanigans uh, because remember, uh, Newt Gingrich is a goddamn bureaucrat. All right. Another name floating around, Chris Christie. Now, I'm telling you, Chris Christie would not be a bad choice. But uh, I mean, you can't deny the fact that Bridgegate uh, is definitely a black mark in the political career of Chris Christie. And if by some chance Donald Trump nominates Chris Christie. This is going to be a focal point for the lamestream mainstream media. They're going to dig deeper into this whole Bridgegate situation. Now, if you folks don't know what I'm talking about, well, good for you. But I'm telling you, if uh, Chris Christie was nominated the vice presidential nominee, this Bridgegate would be relived all over again, and uh, it wouldn't make the Trump campaign look very good, to say the least. All right, I, mean, I like Christie. All right, I mean, I like the guy. He's a, he's a, he's a barrel ass. Uh, you know, he, he talks a lot of trash. You know, I'm not afraid of too much. But the Bridgegate scandal could taint the uh, Trump campaign, in my personal opinion. And, of course, we've got uh, Senator Jeff Sessions out of Alabama. And, folks, uh, I, don't, I don't think that's the bad decision at all. I, I, I could live with a Senator Jeff Sessions as VP. Because Senator Jeff Sessions is probably the only Republican senator that hasn't sold himself out as an agent of international bureaucracy, all right? I'm serious. I mean, folks, 
just showing you how American and true American Jeff Session is, I strongly advise people to look up, of course, after this show, <laughs> but look up Jeff Sessions and his uh, and his discussion with Leon Panetta in a congressional hearing in which Senator Jeff Sessions asked Leon Panetta, who exactly does he get his authority to wage war? And basically, Panetta says that we go through bureaucratic international institutions, and Sessions is like, wait a minute, that goes against the Constitution. The only people that have the authority to wage war for America is Congress. So, I mean, are, are, what are you all going to do? You all are just going to go and, and do your international bureaucracy uh, coalition of, uh, uh, of war pact and just go with it and not worry about Congress? And it's a very good exchange. I might retweet it if uh, once the uh, show is over. But, folks, uh, Senator Jeff Sessions, in my personal opinion, is uh, a very safe candidate. Uh, this man is a true American, uh, speaks the truth, uh, definitely an anti-bureaucratic in- international institutionalist, uh, definitely someone who understands trade, understands a little bit about foreign policy, understands how the bureaucratic system of government works. So I could live with a Jeff Sessions. Now, of course, folks, my personal pick, my personal VP pick would be my man, Herman Sugarcane, baby. Now, I'm going to explain why. First and foremost, he should have been the goddamn nominee in 2012. But, of course, this establishment Republican GOP system basically character assassinated Herman Sugar Kane out of the presidential candidacy. All right, I'm serious. It was the Republican Party that backstabbed him, and I was living at the time. Y'all can look back at the archive at blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. I was living at the time when Herman Sugar Kane was blindsided. We was backstabbed by the GOP. And I'm telling you, this man, all right, this man should have been the presidential nominee for the Republican Party in 2012. But by God, the Republican establishment stabbed this man in the back. Stabbed him in the back! And I think that he should be a potential contender for Trump's vice presidential nomination just because of that alone. All right? Just because of that alone, because he is anti-GOP, the GOP stabbed him in the back, and that's all there is to it. So anyway, that's my personal pick. My second personal pick, Ben Carson. All right? Now, Ben Carson's a little different. All right? Now, Ben Carson is more of an insurance policy that uh, if Trump is elected president, you got some of these lefty, pinko, communist, socialist idiots that get a hair up their ass and try to take a shot at Trump, well, the alternative is an evangelical black man who believes that, you know, he has a a Saturday night, uh, you know, hangout sessions with Jesus Christ himself. All right, now, I'm not talking anything against Ben Carson. I think he's a good man. I think that he's a very intelligent man. I think that he's a little bit uh, too evangelical for my liking. But at the same time, I prefer an evangelical Christian over whatever in the hell they're pushing on the Democratic side, atheist, satanic, unscrupulous, criminal, corrupt, whatever they're throwing over there, right? At least we know that uh, Ben Carson is an honest man. So that's my personal opinion. That's who I want. I believe, uh, you know, Herman Sugar Cane, Ben Carson, I like Jeff Sessions. Uh, I don't know about Newt Gingrich. I can understand why Donald Trump is entertaining a Newt Gingrich. He was the guy who literally uh, was bitch-slapping Bill Clinton in the Congress when he was Speaker of the House in the 90s. Uh, the whole reason why Bill Clinton uh, you know, pushed, put forth some of these initiatives that he now takes credit for was because of the pressure that was put forth by the Congress, which was led by Newt Gingrich. Now, I don't want to get into a history lesson about what happened during that time, but Newt Gingrich did shut down the government for a good portion of time, did make Bill Clinton crack on several different pieces of legislation, and uh, as a result, uh, I believe that's why you've got Trump even entertaining the idea 
of uh, a new Gingrich. Now, these other people, I have no idea. And if I don't know them, then their average everyday schmuck ain't going to know them, which ain't going to provide any pizzazz, any hype, any kind of jolt to the campaign whatsoever. So that's my piece as it relates to the vice presidential picks of Donald Trump. As long as it's not Sarah goddamn Palin. I've been hearing that name, and goddamn it, Trump, don't you dare, man. Please don't. I mean, she could, you know, be a surrogate for you. Uh, you could give her some BS cabinet seat. I don't care. Do not please make her your vice presidential nominee. Please don't do it. I mean, that I don't know what I'd do. I'd probably end the show. I'm, I'm going to be on, oh, I'm serious. I'm not kidding around. If Donald Trump were to pick Sarah Palin, I probably could not do this show anymore. I'm not kidding around. I do not like Sarah Palin. And the reason is, folks, is because she she is a contributing factor on why we have a Republican Party that is so liberal at this time. And, you know, the irony is that Sarah Palin tries to make herself out to be a mouthpiece of conservatism when it was her own family's ridiculousness is what corroded the whole idea of conservatism and morality and correlation with Republicans to begin with. I remember that 2012 goddamn Republican convention. It was a coronation for the Democrats. It was a coronation for liberalism taking control of the damn Republican Party. I mean, y'all remember Sarah Eskimo Bimbo Palin's daughter, Bristol, and she was a teenage little slut bag. She was freaking pregnant, for Christ's sake, uh, teenage pregnancy being highlighted like it's no big deal back in 2012, for Christ's sake. Y'all remember that crap? Or excuse me, 2008, excuse me. I, I'm, Jesus Christ, 2008. I'm, I'm getting my damn uh, election screwed up. That was in 2008, my bad. My bad, 2012 was the Mitt Romney uh, freaking uh, Paul Ryan ticket, which sucked the chrome off of a 57 Chevy bumper, for Christ's sake. But in 2008, when John Turncoat McCain and Sarah Palin were running as the Republican ticket, I remember very vividly that goddamn Republican convention, and it was a liberal coronation of the takeover of the Republican Party. And not to mention, this broad's a dummy. She's stupid. I'm, I'm just, God, oh, please, Trump, man, I'm serious. Do not pick Sarah Palin, man, please, all right? I don't think you are, but just in case you're going to go off keister and do something, do, just don't do it. Please don't do it, all right? That's all I'm saying. Anyway, folks, I also want to talk a little bit about how Hillary Clinton and her campaign in conjunction with the lamestream mainstream media, have used the 4th of July holiday weekend to basically nullify the whole Bill Clinton-Loretta Lynch secret meeting that should be dominating the airwaves and the minds of Americans all over this country. I mean, this is an illegal act, for Christ's sake. This is an illegal act. I mean, this is like if somebody was investigating your mother, all right, like you had a prosecutor having your mother under investigation, and you meet this prosecutor uh, in a bar somewhere for a few, for Christ's sake, huh? I mean, both you and the prosecutor are in serious trouble. I mean, do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not joking. So that's why I'm saying, folks, all right, I mean, what has happened here between uh, the Loretta Lynch, Bill Clinton meeting, and how the lamestream mainstream media has spun it into no big deal just goes to show you how stupid America really is, all right? I mean, we've got a woman here who's running for president who is literally under FBI investigation. This is a criminal investigation, folks, okay? Bill Clinton meets with the Department of Justice top cop, attorney general, which, believe it or not, folks, FBI works for the DOJ, works for the attorney general, meets with the attorney general privately, and what, that's not supposed to be some level of corruption there? I mean, give me a break. I mean, lest we forget that Bill Clinton nominated, or excuse me, 
he didn't nominate. He just brought uh, Loretta Lynch into the federal prosecution game back in 1999, appointed her uh, to uh, the federal prosecutor's office out there in New York, East Harlem. I mean, lest we forget that. I mean, just that connection alone and her, his wife being under investigation through her Department of Justice, I mean, this all stinks to high hell. But you see the lamestream, mainstream media, they're sweeping it under the rug, for Christ's sake. I mean, they're sweeping it under the rug. Oh, my God. I mean, is America this stupid? Is America this goddamn retarded, for Christ's sake? I'm sorry for using that word, but I could give a rat's ass about political correctness right now. Is America this retarded? This woman, Hillary Rotten Clinton, is under investigation by the FBI, a criminal investigation by the FBI. Her husband meets with the Attorney General, who he nominated in 1999 into the federal prosecution, uh, uh, whole federal prosecution arena, by nominating her the federal prosecutor in New York and East Harlem, for Christ's sake, in 1999. I mean... Where are your heads, you idiots? How can you liberals, how can you Democrats justify this crap? I mean, not even socialist meatbag chewing Bill Maher could justify this crap. I'm not joking. I mean, this socialist scumbag Bill Maher can't even justify why it's okay for Bill Clinton to meet with Loretta Lynch while his wife is being investigated by the goddamn FBI. Not even him. But no, you got a whole bunch of liberals. I trust Hillary. That was trending today. Did y'all see that crap? I trust Hillary. You trust her for what? What do you trust her for, huh? That she won't answer the phone when it comes to her making the final call as it relates to a certain situation in Benghazi? Do you trust Hillary uh, with your uh, daughter? Huh? I'll tell you what I trust Hillary to do. I trust Hillary to emotionally and mentally abuse the women that Bill Clinton physically and sexually abuses. All right? And she has a whole record of that, for Christ's sake. You know what I'm saying? A whole record of that. You know, she's supposed to be the goddamn uh, uh, supposed uh, woman candidate, right? What a what a joke. You know what I'm saying? What an utter joke. Oh, my God. I mean, you know, and, and you're talking about the woman candidate, right? Here she's got a husband. Lest we forget, th this idiot's sexual deviant rapist-like behavior goes as far back to when he was 19 years old at Oxford. Did y'all read about this? Well, y'all need to read about this, folks. Uh, he was expelled from Oxford for raping, allegedly, some chick at a bar out there in Oxford. Yeah. Huh? Oh, we forget about that, don't we? Oh, oh. But no, Hillary Clinton is the goddamn woman candidate, right? Even though she went out and threatened Kathleen Willey, who basically came out and said that, just like everyone else who said uh, regular, sadistic, sexual abusive behavior that Bill Clinton conducts on women, for Christ's sake. She came out publicly and told everybody about it. And lo and behold, Hillary Clinton sent her own private investigation team and her own henchmen to go out there and scare the bejesus out of Kathleen Willey. You can even ask her about it. They killed her cat. They killed her cat, and then you had a couple of Hillary Clinton's henchmen go up to her while she was jogging, and saying, oh, that's a little shame what happened to your cat there, Kathleen Willie. A little bit of a shame there. Maybe you need to keep your mouth shut about the Clintons there. Huh? Maybe you need to keep your mouth shut about the Clintons. I'm not joking. And these are the people, this is the person that these scumbags in America want as president, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, lest we forget all the bodies that conveniently end up dead as it relates to the Clintons. I mean, two weekends ago, some guy who was meant to testify against Hillary Rotten Clinton in some case involving the U.N. and the, some Chinese, uh, so, some Chinese uh, money, of course. It always involves dirty money. 
this guy who was supposed to testify against Hillary Clinton ends up with a goddamn barbell smashing his windpipe. I mean, give me a break. Vince Foster, Ron Brown, uh, Hubble. Uh, I mean, we could go on and on about all these people that just end up dead around the Clintons, but nobody just seems to talk about that. It's, oh, no, I'm with her. I trust her. I trust her. What the hell do you trust? How can anyone with a sane mind who understands what exactly is going on as it relates to this Hillary Clinton email scandal and all the other scandals that encapsulate the Clintons, how can anyone continue to sit here and still justify voting for this piece of trash? Seriously, how can anyone continue to justify voting for this piece of crap? I want to hear from you right now. After the Loretta Lynch-Bill Clinton meeting, the secret meeting, which is illegal, all right? Don't let the lamestream, mainstream media idiots tell you anything otherwise. It's illegal. It's illegal. At the very least, uh, Loretta Lynch should be removed from office. At the very least. I think she should be prosecuted uh, for acting as an obstructor to justice. I mean, yeah, I, mean I, could, I could start naming off uh, charges that you could start filing for this. I mean, she's obstructing justice. Uh, she's conspiring. Uh, she, I mean, I, I, could, I could go on and on for Christ's sake, but at the very minimum, this woman should be removed as the attorney general, and Bill Clinton should have some kind of uh, uh, tampering, some level of obstruction, some charge against him for going into Loretta Lynch's plane and talking about whatever the hell they're going to talk about while his wife is under FBI criminal investigation. Unfreaking real. You know what? Give me my drink. Give me my drink, for Christ's sake. You see, this is what we're having to deal with on the 4th of July, folks. This is the kind of evil that's trying to take away our country. This is the kind of leftist, liberal, bureaucratic evil that wants to take away our freedom of speech, freedom of the press, all right, uh, freedom of religion, all right? And they are utilizing our freedoms to oppress us. You get this game that these liberals are trying to do? It's ridiculous. This is what we got to think about on this July 4th, folks. I mean, this is no time to play around anymore. These liberal, bureaucratic, democratic pieces of trash are dead serious on implementing their totalitarian tactics. And they are even more forceful now that Britannia has voted out of the European Union. Ever since Brexit, we have seen full throttle on all bureaucratic models throughout the world trying to accelerate their totalitarianism. I mean, right after Brexit, you got the European Union coming out and saying that they are going to usurp the military and the economies of the member states of the European Union. That the European Union is going to create its own military. All right? You've got Barack Obama meeting with that fruity-ass Trudeau and the Mexican president basically hollering about the North American Union. All right, laying the groundwork for it to become a reality, for Christ's sake. All right, I mean, these damn idiot bureaucrats that we elected into office are agents of bureaucratic institutionalist power. All right, they're international bureaucratic institutionalists, agent every one of these goddamn career bureaucrats. It's disgusting that you idiots can't understand this, can't see this, can't put that through your goddamn head. I mean, what's it going to take, for Christ's sake? I mean, look around you. Does this look like the America that you saw 10, 15 years ago? Does this look like the America? You can't even hang a, you can't even hang a flag. You can't even hang an American flag outside your damn door without being, Oh, you offended a Muslim. Oh, you offended this person. Mm -hmm. If we can't hang an American flag outside our door, then what the hell are we celebrating here today for? Huh? Are we just making an excuse to gather around our families and overindulge in hot dogs and drinking beer and popping fireworks, for Christ's sake? Is this all this goddamn holiday has turned out to be? I mean, it makes me sick. It should make you sick. It makes me angry. It makes me angry. I mean, this is America. This is America. This is the liberal shitbag America. Good. <laughs>
This is America. This is goddamn America. I mean, think about it, assholes. God damn it, think about it. You remember America 15, 20 years ago? You remember that? Do you remember the vision? Do you remember the social landscape of America about 15, 20 years ago? Do you remember the economy? Do you remember what you were buying? Do you remember your way of life? Do you remember the difference of what America was about 15 or 20 years ago? To today, to today, to today, to today. God damn it, this is the 4th of July, for Christ's sake. Wake up, America. Wake up, for Christ's sake. Wake up. Jesus Christ, wake up. Look at this liberal shitbag, man. Look at it. Look at this place. You cannot seriously believe that America is at the pinnacle point of what it ever was, for Christ's sake. No one can legitimately justify that the times of today that have been brought forth by Barack Obama, that have been brought forth by the liberal regime, that have been brought forth by the goddamn Democrats, is somehow a great point in American history. These people have destroyed this country. The liberals have destroyed America. Wake up! Wake up! The liberals, the Democrats, the damn lifetime politicians, these goddamn career bureaucrats, they've ruined America! They've ruined America! Wake the hell up! Wake up! Wake up! God damn mic! God damn mic! Wake up, America! God damn it! Wake up! If you don't wake up, we're not going to have a goddamn country left. If you don't wake up, we're going to end up like Venezuela, you dumbasses. If you don't wake up, we are going to turn this great country of America into a third world technocratic piece of crap. And if you don't believe me, well, by God, take a look at Europe, you stupid, ungrateful jerk dicks. All right, if you don't believe me, take a look at goddamn Europe. Look at the migrant crisis. Look at what it's done to Europe. Look at the migrant crisis. Look at what the European Union has done to the European member states. That's what's going to come to America if you elect Hillary Rotten Clinton or any of these goddamn agents of international bureaucratic power. <sighs> Jesus Christ, this makes me sick, man. Give me my drink. Give me my drink, for Christ's sake. I gotta drink some goddamn Johnny Walker Blue Label just to take the edge off, for Christ's sake, on this 4th of July edition of the True Capitalist Radio Broadcast. Ugh. Oh, man, that's good stuff. Let me calm down here for a second, folks. Uh, <clears throat> I know it may sound like I'm going off keister. I know probably a lot of people are probably sitting there saying, you know, Ghost, why are you getting all riled up? Why don't you go have yourself a hamburger? Why don't you go have yourself a nice drink? You know, have some time. We don't have any time. Do you understand that? We don't have any time. Look at the idiots in America, man. They cannot see corruption and criminality if it's slapping upside their stupid fat faces. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus Christ. This makes me It makes me sick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be completely honest with you. That, you know, America could just sit back, wax its own carrot, you know, wax its own carrot while Bill Clinton and Loretta Lynch completely bring out in the open that this goddamn government is a corrupt bunch of crap. Real fresh, real great, all right? Anyway, before I take a couple of calls here, let's go ahead and get to some Twitter shout-outs. And for you folks, let me take another drink here. i got, I got to take another drink. Give me, a, give me my drink! Jesus. Ugh. I'm pissed, man! I mean, we should be celebrating the 
American way, the American way of life today. But, folks, the American way of life is not what we know it any longer. And we should all be ashamed of ourselves for allowing whatever pieces of garbage that we elected into this government of ours to change it and reshape it into the political correct nightmare that we are now currently living in in modern-day America. Anyway, folks, I'm going to give some Twitter shout-outs live right here on the broadcast, and all you have to do to get a Twitter shout-out is retweet the first tweet on my Twitter account, and, of course, the Twitter account is Politics Ghost, all one word, no underscores, Politics Ghost, and the first tweet to retweet is True Capitalist Radio Now Live. That's what you got to retweet. You retweet that, I'll go ahead and give you a shout-out. Uh, do we got any shout-outs, Engineer? <laughs> Man, are you okay, engineer, man? You haven't been sounding like yourself lately. Yes, sir. All right, I think we're okay. It's calm down, engineer. I'm all right, all right? I'm all right. Yes. All right, we got, uh, hey, we got Z Frostwire in the house. We got Dirk Diggler, Depressed Poppy, uh, Ghost O' Lake's Butter, real funny asshole. It's not the butter, all right? Fireworks killed ghost. Yeah, real funny, asshole. What's going on? A regular TCA in the house. Dorito Burrito. What's going on? Uh, ghost is Mr. Krabs. What the hell does that mean, you son of a bitch? Ghost is Mr. Krabs. What the hell does that mean? Uh, we've got uh, some idiot named Badass Bolshevik. You son of a bitch. Uh, we've got uh, 4th of July Anxiety Day. 4th of July. Look. Folks, don't make fun of the fact that I was having some goddamn chest pains on last Thursday. I had to go to the goddamn hospital. I wait there eight hours, countless tests billed to my goddamn insurance, only for them to tell me I got anxiety. That's not funny, all right? It's not. It was a waste of my life, to say the least. We've got Artron Havoc in the house. Uh, we got Sidekick in the place. Uh, we've got Kill the Bald Eagle. You son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. That's got to be some foreigner or something or some idiot from one of these wild Jehudi countries or something of that nature. Give me a goddamn break. We got uh, Exara Hawks in the house. What's going on? Uh, we've got Stephen M2471 in the place. Uh, we've got a wild Jehudi. There's a wild Jehudi there. We got the Brony Network in the house. Uh, here we go with the trans jokes. Trans Johnny Walker. They put a pair of balls on a Johnny Walker bottle. Yeah, real funny ass cracks. What's going on to Karaskin? Karaskin's in the house. Who the hell else do we got here? We got uh, Capitalist UK, the Green Leader. Uh, please forgive Loretta. Yeah, screw you, you idiot. Please forgive Loretta. Can you believe these assholes? Oh, oh. Sign up to become an O'Reilly O Rewards member today and start earning instantly. O Rewards members earn $5 back for every $150 they spend, so if you haven't become a member yet, what are you waiting for? It's fast, easy, and free. O Rewards, it's your road to exclusive offers only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. See store for details. O, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Anyway, we got Portugal for Ghost in the house. Uh, we got ungrateful colonist, ungrateful colonist, asshole, ungrateful colon, you stupid monarch! <laughs> ungrateful colonist, you sons of bitches! We created the greatest experiment this world has ever known, and ever since the world is trying to be, destroy this country, and they're utilizing these stupid, soulless, bureaucratic liberals to destroy this country, but we're not going to let you do it. We're going to fight back, and we're fighting back. This is America. We're going to take our country back. We're going to make America great again, boy. And that's what we all need to realize on this 4th of July. We need to realize that there is two paths right now in this presidential election, you sons of bitches. Give me the mic. Give me the goddamn mic. Give me that freaking mic, you scumbag. There's two paths we can go down in this presidential election. If you want to sell yourself out, 
to an international bureaucratic institution that would, wants to take away American sovereignty, take away American economics, take away American jobs, and put you into economic serfdom, well then, by God, go ahead and vote for Hillary Rotten Clinton, that piece of trash, who wants to destroy America and give America sovereignty to some stupid bureaucratic institutionalist internationalist crap. Or you vote for Donald Trump, who is going to make America great again, America first economic policy, America first domestic policy, America first foreign policy, American first domestic policy. Do you understand that, folks? All right? I mean, we need to make America great again. I mean, look at these scumbags that have this dumbass tw Twitter trend trending on Twitter. Hashtag America was never great. I'm telling you this right now. For all you folks that are in that hashtag talking garbage about America, why don't you get the hell out of here and go to Liberia? Or go to Brazil. They could use some help, for Christ's sake. They can't even build uh, what they're supposed to build for the Olympics. Why don't you go down there to those slums? Uh, why don't you go down to Venezuela, where socialism is you know, kicking off very nicely out there? Why don't you get the hell out of here if America was never great? Uh, oh, but you're on a computer, right, that was innovated by American companies. You're on a goddamn cell phone which was innovated by American companies. You were on all kinds of goddamn technology that was catapulted by the capitalist idea. Uh, you're taking advantage of all this. Why don't you get the hell out of here and go to North Korea if America was never great, you stupid scumbags? Get out! Get the hell out if you don't like it, boy. We don't need you out here in America. Do you understand that? If you're going to sit here and, and claim that America was never great. Well, by God, we don't need you. We don't need you. Get, get out. Get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of my country. Anyway, we got Sergeant Yoda in the place. What's going on to Sergeant Yoda? Uh, we got uh, distilling capitalists in the house. What's going on, man? Uh, we got G in the house. We got the Teutonic Plague in the place. We've got Commander Biff in the place. What's going on? Uh, who the hell else do we got going on over here? Once again, Politics Ghost retweet the first tweet on my Twitter account to get a shout-out right here, right now, live of the broadcast. We've got uh, uh, Platinum Robo. We've got uh, Charlie the Panda. Uh, shove it up your ass. I know what you're going at with that, you son of a bitch. We've got Torzir in the place. What's going on? Strictly Diesel. Uh, Godzilla in the house. What's going on, man? Uh, upside down U.S. flag, uh, shove it up your ass, boy. Ain't no upside down American flags here, you son of a bitch. We've got cucks for Clinton. Yeah, real funny ass crack, real funny. We got boat in the house. What's going on? We got blood fart. Uh, we've got, uh, the whore master. Oh, yes, I'm the whore master. How you doing, the whore master? Who the hell else do we got here? We got, uh... Fast and Furious Heart Rate. You, know, you son of a bitch. You shove it up your ass, all right? Cody from California. Uh, ghosts, false, false flag. Uh, shove it up your ass, all right? And you want to talk about false flag. I mean, what bombing do you want to talk about this weekend that's deviating the consciousness of everybody from this goddamn Hillary Rotten Clinton, Bill Clinton, Loretta Lynch scandal? I mean, which one do you want to talk about, for Christ's sake, man? There's been so many of them. You got that poor schmuck who got his foot blown off, stepping on some kind of an explosive at Central Park. You got that Baghdad bombing out there in Iraq that killed, what, is almost 200 people. You've got three bombings that happened today in Saudi Arabia, one of which happening at one of the holiest of mosques in the Sunni religion, which is rather ironic, by the way. So, you know, what, what, what are you talking about, man? I mean, there is so much news going on as it relates to uh, the religion of peace, though, that uh, no one's really even given two rat's asses now about Bill Clinton meeting with Loretta Lynch privately on a plane while her damn wife is being investigated, well, his, well, his wife, excuse me, is being investigated by the FBI uh, under criminal investigation. So shove it up your ass, all right? 
Anyway, we've got the trans Twitter. Oh, great, a pair of balls on the Twitter logo. That's funny. Uh, we got USA for Bernie. Looks like the Bernie Sanders fans, they're listening. And, look, we're going to talk about that in a minute. All right? Bernie Sanders, feel the burn people are coming on the Trump train, baby. All right? I tweeted that earlier today. We've got people that used to be on the Bernie uh, bandwagon. They're now coming to the Trump train because they know they don't want Hillary. It's never Hillary. They don't want Hillary, and I don't blame them, all right? I don't blame them, for Christ's sake. Anyway, who the hell else do we got going on over here? I'm only going to take a couple more in that. We got Capitalist K in the house. Uh, We got Razor 360 in the place. Uh, Who the hell else do we got going on over here? We got... uh, Trump Palin 16, don't even kid around about that asshole, seriously, I'm not joking, Trump Palin 16, please do not kid around! We've got Roger Stone's Nixon tat, Uh, we've got Lego Fan 421, Uh, Teutonic has cool people, whatever the hell that's supposed to mean, we've got the Trans Panda, oh that's great, oh that's just great. Uh, we got the green bio in the house, Hermaphrodite penis, Jesus Christ, novelty best in the place, uh, ghost back mountain, you son of a bitch, shut up, fruiting up my show for Christ's sake, we got free Zorg in the house, uh, who the hell else, well, I'm only going to take a couple more, man, because I'm, I'm getting tired of these sick, twisted names, you know, I try to give a little bit of interaction with the show, and this is the kind of thanks that I get, for Christ's sake, all right? Jesus Christ. We got trans vagina. All right, that's it. That's enough. I've had enough of this goddamn trans testicle fixation of you losers, all right? Look, I'm not going to let you people ruin my 4th of July, all right? I'm serious. I'm not joking right now, all right? I am not joking right now. So anyway, folks, once again, I am not going to, uh, I'm not going to keep this going. I'm sorry. I'm not, yeah, screw you, damn trolls. I don't care if you don't like it. Screw you. You're not ruining my 4th of July holiday here. God bless America, and happy birthday to America. All right, folks, we are now in the second hour of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. And, of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank you very much for tuning in with me. Before we get into anything else, I'd like for everybody to please spread it around like wildfire and let everybody know that True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house, and we are live every Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, blogtalkradio.com slash ghost is the official website of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast, so don't just sit there and play with your pecker shaft. Bookmark it, blogtalkradio.com slash ghost is the official website. And before I get into the rest of the broadcast, I want to say cheers to every patriotic American, everyone who is celebrating this 4th of July holiday and wants to make America great again, who is not some ridiculous socialist communist American hater. We want to embrace patriotism. We want to embrace the American flag. We want to embrace the idea of the destruction, the destruction of political correctness. And that's what we want to celebrate today, folks. We want to celebrate the destruction of political correctness. It should be destroyed. So cheers to everyone who is celebrating making America great again and destroying political correctness on this 4th of July holiday. Happy birthday, America. Cheers, baby. Oh, <laughs> woo! Man, I'm not, I'm, I'm I'm chugging the Johnny Walker Blue Label today, boy. I tell you that right, goddamn now. <laughs> woo! Anyway, folks, look, uh, I got a couple other things to talk about here. Uh, I want to talk about how Bernie Sanders supporters are now hopping on the Trump train. Uh, we all get that. I tweeted a little bit about that uh, earlier today. And we all know what Uncle Bernie's doing. He's not backing down. He's still trying to go at it. From what I've read here recently, he's trying to file a lawsuit 
to stop the primary results of California for some kind of garbage like that. So he is still being a thorn in the ass of the Democratic Party. But if you want my personal opinion, folks, uh, he is doing this to get more money, in my personal opinion. I've said it, and I will always continue to say it. I mean, you had the Green Party, uh, the candidate of the Green Party, Jill Stein, stating that she would be a vice presidential candidate and step down from the presidential nominee of the Green Party so that Bernie Sanders could run under the Green Party ticket. But Bernie Sanders ain't going to do that, boy. Bernie Sanders ain't going to do that because then he's going to have to spend all that money in his campaign contribution account. And he don't want to do that, baby. (laughs) That's his retirement. I mean, that's what he got off of all you feel-the-burn assholes. He got nothing but a damn retirement from you people. All right? Every one of you stupid losers that donated to the campaign contribution account of Bernie Sanders should be ashamed of yourselves. All right? You've been defrauded. All right? You should be completely demoralized, for Christ's sake, because he took your money and he ran, for Christ's sake. And obviously he didn't run for president. (laughs) Woo! Oh, my God. But, hey, folks, I mean, what do you got to say? I mean, you got taken by Uncle Bernie, all right? I mean, look, look, this is what he did. Like, hey, I'm Uncle Bernie, and that's right. Come on over here. Uh, Give me your campaign contribution. All right, come on over here. Sit on Uncle Bernie's lap. Keep, Keep contributing. Keep contributing. That's right. Now, come on over here. Take your underwears off. Oh, yeah, that's it. Keep contributing to the campaign contribution account of one Bernie Sanders. That's right. I'll give you free health care. Take your underwears off. Oh, oh, you hurt me. Oh, oh, take your underwears off. I'll give you free health care. I'll give you free everything you want. Take your under. Keep donating. Here, let me donate to you now. That's right, it's Uncle Bernie. I'm going to keep donating to you. You donate to me, I donate to you. Come here. That's right, it's Uncle Bernie. Oh, yeah, call me Uncle Bernie. Keep contributing. I'm not going to give it back. I'm not going to give it... Oh, oh. Oh. That's what he did. That's what he did. I'm not joking. That's what Bernie Sanders did to all you feel the burn assholes. That's what he did. Whether you want to admit it or not, maybe you're in denial. You know, maybe you're one of these, like, I don't know, I'm not going to go there, but you, you get it. You're, you're, you're in a sad state of affairs for you feel the burn people. And if you're still out here with this cockamamie Bernie Sanders for president idea, you either need to, you know, stay out of the politics game, first and foremost, or you hop on the Trump train, for Christ's sake, all right? I mean, that's all there is to it. That's your only options, Bernie Sanders supporters. Your only options are to get out of politics and go smoke your reefer or, uh, you know, do whatever the hell you stupid losers do or hop on the Trump train and vote for Donald Trump in opposition of Hillary Rotten Clinton for stealing the nomination from your old man, Bernie prostate-infected Sanders. I mean, what are you damn Bernie Sanders people going to do? Y'all going to vote for Hillary? Really? Huh? I'm serious. I mean, are you kind of, I mean, come on. You're going to vote for Hillary Rotten? Get the hell out of here. So that's why I'm saying, folks, all right, you damn Bernie Sanders people need to take your heads out of your clogged up, wannabe socialist ass cracks, and you need to realize that the only option that you have is voting for Donald Trump so that you can tell Hillary Rotten Clinton that she is not anointed to the presidency, folks, all right? I mean, at the very minimum, that's what you damn Bernie Sanders folks need to do. You need to vote for Donald Trump to smite Hillary Rotten Clinton, to prove to her that she does not have ownership of this country, all right? Because, look, it's a pipe dream if you believe that Bernie Sanders is going to somehow usurp the nomination is going to run as a third party. He's not going to do it. So stop donating to his campaign contribution account and hop on the Trump train because that's your only option, in my opinion. And if you don't think so, then get the hell out of politics and move to Venezuela. Jesus Christ. And uh, I also want to talk a little bit about Nigel Farage stepping down as leader of UKIP. 
the UK Independent Party. Now, I know that comes a little bit as a shock to folks, uh, but I saw the speech of Nigel Farage, and I don't blame him for stepping down. I mean, 17 years, almost 20 years, uh, being a member of the European Union Parliament and utilizing his uh, position in bureaucratic power in an attempt to use it against itself. I mean, that's basically what Nigel Farage did. He basically utilized the, the bureaucratic authority of the European Union and turned it around against itself. And let me tell you, you couldn't have found a more patient individual, and I'm talking to you folks in Britannia, you couldn't have found a more patient individual to achieve this objective. Almost 20 years, he's been fighting these Eurocrats. And finally, now that the referendum has been voted and Brexit is reality, for Christ's sake, I don't think that Farage has anything left to fight for. I mean, this man gave 20 years of his life. And uh, he even said in his speech it was a great detriment to himself and those that are, that are around him. I mean, just imagine how much death threats, uh, you know, how much scrutiny, how much criticism, uh, how much, I mean, who knows behind the scenes what Nigel Farage has taken for the past 20 years. But now that Brexit has become a reality, he is now stepping down as the UKIP leader. He, of course, says that he's going to continue to support uh, the party. He's going to continue to support the Brexit. He's going to observe the negotiations happening in Belgium like a hawk. So he's still going to be affiliated with everything that he has done. But uh, at the end of his speech, he said that he has done his bit, and now he wants his life back. And that starts right now, and then he walked off the stage. I mean, let me tell you, 20 years, man, 20 years being a damn bureaucrat, in an attempt to disassemble the bureaucracy. I mean, this is what I have been saying all along, folks, that America and the world needs to vote in politicians that are going to dismantle the bureaucracy. We don't need politicians that are going to go into a bureaucratic system to add bureaucracy. We need uh, politicians that are going to go into a bureaucratic system to dis disassemble the bureaucracy, and that's exactly what Nigel Farage did. Uh, Britannia was lucky to have such a bureaucrat, and let me tell you, he was not a bureaucrat at first. He came in from the business world. All right, this is a man who used to work in the financial arena, made lots of money, and decided to get into politics because what he saw on the wall. I mean, if you're working in the financial arena, you start understanding that there is a convergence happening on an international front that goes beyond trade. It goes into the politics. It goes into the sociality. It goes into the economics. It goes into taxation, tariffs, all kinds of stuff. And that's what Nigel Farage saw. And he took 20 years of his life in an attempt through the game of bureaucracy to dismantle the bureaucratic system. And uh, even though Nigel Farage is stepping down as the leader of UKIP, I think that he is a gold standard of what everybody in the world should be looking towards as any kind of political candidate. I mean, him stepping down only reassures the fact that this man truly loved Britannia and truly wanted the Brexit, and now that that objective has been achieved, this man actually wants to go back and live his life as a civilian, as a man of the people, as a man of Britannia, not as a man of the European Union. And once again, Nigel, Parag Nigel Farage excuse me, should be the gold standard of every country on what to elect as a politician, someone who is going to be elected to a bureaucratic system to disassemble that bureaucratic system. So let me go ahead, since I'm drinking up a storm here, I want to say cheers to Nigel Farage out here uh, and the UKIP, the United Kingdom Independent Party. You accomplished what nobody in the world even fathomed. And you know what? Uh, everyone should look to that particular situation in an attempt to understand how we all disconnect ourselves from these international bureaucratic institutions. Cheers to Nigel Farage, baby. Cheers.
Good stuff, man. I'm telling you, good stuff. Anyway, I'm going to open up the phone lines here. I want to hear from you. 516-453-9903 is the number to call here on this 4th of July edition of the True Capitalist Radio Broadcast. And, of course, if you are going to, you know, do some radio graffiti nonsense or whatever the hell you're going to do, please refrain from doing that until we finally announce radio graffiti time, you stupid, ungrateful, milky-licking pieces of un patriotic crap anyway uh, do we got any callers there engineer <laughs> all right well let's go ahead and get to some callers right now <laughs> Woo! all right how about 636 you're on the horn what's going on this fourth of july hello how you doing hey um gus i just wanted to talk to you um so I've been talking to a lot of Hillary Clinton supporters, and I find it really amazing that um, they don't care at all about corruption. Um, a lot of them just say that corruption is a nat- natural part of being a politician, and they think even Ob- Obama, of course, is corrupt, but they think every other politician is just as corrupt as Hillary. The only issue is Hillary has been bad at finding you that. I just want to hear your opinion on that. Well, you know, you got a good point because that's the same rhetoric they talk about in the 90s as it related to her husband, Bill Clinton. I mean, they, remember they, uh, one of the biggest jokes that comedians would say in the 90s as it related to Bill Clinton was that, yeah, but he lies, but he lies, but you know what? I like him. He makes me feel good in the pants. And literally, that's been the foundation of Democrats ever since. So I completely agree with you that these Democrats could care less about corruption, but you have to go a little bit further, and you've got to expose that corruption right in their face. That's why what they like to do, folks, as you saw when we all tweeted at D-Ray several hundred times, they just like to ignore you. And you see, there needs to be enough of us slapping these stupid Hillary Rotten Clinton supporters in the face with the truth that they can no longer deny it, and even in the back of their stupid heads, it's going to bother them in their subconscious that as as self-righteous and as badass liberal as they think they are, they are no different uh, than the pimp uh, who gets uh, teenage girls off the street and uh, forces them to sell their bodies for money and takes all their cash from them once they get home from the stroll. I mean, it's no different than that crap, for Christ's sake. Now, the remedy for that, in my personal opinion, is slap them with the truth. Shame these people. I mean, why don't we use the same damn tactics that they use against us? We use against them. Shame these people into justifying why Hillary Clinton is a great candidate. Shame them into believing that, oh, you think that she is a candidate for women? Well, take a look at all the women that her husband has sexually abused, raped, and harassed, and take a look at her actions towards those women. Even though he was the initiator of sexual aggression, even though he was the initiator of the sexual abuse, Hillary Rodden Clinton was his pit bull who went after these women and made sure they shut it up, shut their mouths, for Christ's sake. What's up with your calendar? I replace all the days of the week with sandwiches. Because? Because at Subway restaurants, every day, there's a different sub of the day. Fair enough. Yeah. Each day I can choose a different six-inch sub for just three fifty, dollars or get it as a foot-long sub for $6. So why is today circled in red? Oh, today's my anniversary. Oh. Maybe you should. Yeah, I gotta go. Subway. Fresh is what we do. Limited time only. Prices and participation may vary. Additional charge for extras and deluxe, plus tax replicable. Sandwiches prepared in front of you you got to keep slapping it in their faces, man. Slap it in their faces. Now, with all due respect, uh, 636, yeah, there are a lot of Hillary Rotten Clinton supporters that are just going to not give two rats asses about the corruption. But those people we don't even want. I mean, they're stupid, ridiculous, pathetic scum of the earth. And no matter what we do, they're going to just continue to vote for Hillary regardless. What we, as the Trump train, need to start focusing on in shaming these Hillary Rotten Clinton supporters 
is showing third parties, independent voters, who are on the sidelines, who have never voted, or who have never thought about voting but are thinking about voting now. We need to shame the Democrats, even though they have no shame. We need to shame the Hillary supporters, even though they have no shame, so that the third parties of independent voters can observe this and realize within themselves that they want no part of Hillary Rotten Clinton. You understand that? I mean, they, they want no part of Hillary Rotten Clinton, for Christ's sake. I mean, in politics, I think it was a, I forgot what political strategist said this, but in politics, it's the 40 40 20 rule, all right? You're going to have 40% of the people that love Hillary Clinton. She could, she could kill uh, gays in a nightclub, in a mass shooting, and, and no one would care. These 40% of these people could care less. They're still voting for her, right? Then there's the other 40% that absolutely hate Hillary Rotten Clinton and will never vote for her no matter what she does, all right? And then you've got that 20% of I don't know or the so-called independent voters. And you see, this is what the Trump train and the capitalist army need to focus on. Because we need to shape the minds and the consciousness of that 20%, because it's that 20% is what's going to make sure that we on the Trump train win this election. I'm serious. That, I mean, it's that 20% of independent voters that's going to win us the election, folks. So screw the 40% that is in love with Hillary Rotten Clinton, that are going to do, and I mean, she could do anything, and they're still going to vote for her. It doesn't really matter what you do, what you say. doesn't matter if she, you know, does the most heinous, disgusting criminal act. And, of course, there's those of us on the 40, other side of the 40% that hate her and will never vote for her regardless. It's that 20% that we're going after, man, and that's why we have to shame these people. So that when we shame these Hillary Rotten Clinton people and expose the corruption right in their faces, and when the 20% see the Hillary people, ignore it and pretend it doesn't happen or pretend it doesn't exist or accept the corruption and criminality, that will force that 20% to come out and vote for Donald Trump. So that's how the political game works, man. And that's what I believe is going to happen in this election. And that's why I implore all of the capitalist army and the Trump train, you have got to spread the news around like wildfire, all right? I mean, if you've got a social media account, I mean, post news articles that contradict the hypocrisy and the lies by this liberal regime that's in power today, by the lamestream mainstream media that is a propaganda wing for the Democrats, all right? We've got to do whatever it takes, retweet articles, Posts on Facebook, uh, go to the social forum posts, the, 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 the social, other social media accounts, uh, go, go get a damn blog, get a blog. Do whatever it takes to spread the message, for Christ's sake, because what we are going after is that 20% of independent voters so that they can supersede whatever Hillary Rotten Clinton minions that are out there that are going to vote for her regardless. All right, I mean, that's all there is to it. All right, we got to do what we got to do. Anyway, hey, is that the Teutonic Plague? What's going on, Plague? Hey, Ghost. Happy 4th of July. Happy birthday, United States. What's up? Not too bad, man. Sitting here uh, having a few Johnny Walker Blue labels on this uh, 4th of July holiday. Definitely appreciating the patri patriotism all over the Internet. I can't really say the same for liberal hellhole Austin, Texas, but... Uh, you know, uh, not everything could be perfect, you know what I'm saying? And I'm really rather, actually rather disgusted that the political correctness is actually uh, weighing down on this particular holiday. But what's up with you on this 4th of July holiday, man? I'll tell you something. Political correctness offends me. It literally offends me. Look, I decided on June 29th that it would be fun to go into Microsoft Word and publish a fake article of a parodic, humorous nature. Uh, uh, we got this newspaper, the Scheisenstadt Herald, out of Scheisenstadt, Wisconsin. And uh, apparently, according to the headline, marketplaces in Mideast are given a long overdue overhaul. And uh, I wrote, 
Today, according to reports, most major marketplaces and bazaars in the Middle East have been replaced by Target. General John Q. Conquest of the United States Army told reporters today that this would prove to be a major boon for the population of the Arabian country, stating that in light of our current relations with the countries of the Middle East, including Saudi Arabia and Iraq, we have decided that it would be the best of uh, market pl- that it would be best of marketplaces and other public venues to be replaced by target locations to better serve people who could become potential allies. Conquest had no further comments. One of our reporters asked presumptive Republican nominee Donald J. Trump about the situation. Mr. Trump only said that this would be good for business. Editor Scott Clark journeyed to Saudi Arabia in order to speak with top American military officials there. Along the way, he spoke with, Moh- he spoke with Mahmoud Mohammed Ramadan Hajib Nopork, who only said, Target shall face Mecca and the Americans shall obey Sharia. Your children shall be Muslims. In the name of Allah, the compassionate, the merciful, Allah is most great. When Clark finally managed to contact the name by the uh, man by the name of Lieutenant Garth Parton, Parton commented on the situation saying, This I feel is a crucial turning point in our diplomatic relations with the Middle East and in the long run will help the United States business and prosperity at home and abroad. Drone flyovers to inspect potential sites are scheduled to begin this Saturday. <laughs> oh, that's a pretty good article, man. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and tweet that to you. I did it once, but I guess you – but it, you were in the hospital at the time. You were feeling sick. I decided to tweet it to you to cheer you up and do it to cheer you up because laughter, it really is the best medicine. I mean, good God. Uh, I hear you there, Plague. Hey, you want to give any shout-outs to anybody, man? Shout-out to Karaskin. Shout-out to your good self. Shout-out to our brave men and women fighting overseas to ensure our freedom. Shout out to the United States and shout out to Donald Trump. And I know I'm kind of sticking my neck here, but I want to give a shout out, sticking out my neck here, but I want to give a shout out to the engineer. All right. Well, hey, thank you very much there, uh, Teutonic. Uh, You can stay there for the third hour if you want to conduct yourself uh, in that time frame. I'm not really sure if I'm going to have a third hour, to be completely honest, because, uh, man, it's 4th of July, for Christ's sake, man. I want to go have a freaking uh, – some. Freaking American junk food, all right? I want a, a, a double cheeseburger up in here, man, with a, with a beer. You know, some fries, baby, some freedom fries. <laughs> anyway, who the hell else do we got going on over here? We got area code 501. What's going on on 4th of July? Hey, Goose, it's Raiden Snake. How you doing? Hey, how you doing, Raiden Snake? Yeah, I'm all right. And can I just say one thing? It's been really tough to get, try and get through just lately because because every time I just constantly get disconnected. Oh man, you know? I don't really know what that's about, man. To be completely honest with you, uh, I just kind of. I, I, are you doing something, engineer? I don't know what the hell the engineer's problem is, but uh, I, it's nothing on our end. I mean, it's definitely blog talk. I really don't understand their phone system. Uh, I know there's a lot of people who like to listen on the phone, and they're randomly cut off after a certain time period. So I have I can't really answer that, man. No, I know. Well, also, it's not helping with the Skype situation, but it's still being down because it's been what nearly a month almost. Yeah, unfortunately, yes, it has. Yeah, it's just it's just ugh, you know it's just making things. It just doesn't doesn't make it easy for me being across the pond because it's hard to dial numbers. Do you know what I mean? Especially, no, especially I hear you, man. I hear you. I, I there's really I have no timetable. Uh, that's purely up to blog talk, and not to mention, uh, mm. you know, Skype has made it a a lot more difficult, from what I understand, to uh, correlate it with uh, other applications. Yeah, understandable. Oh, and I need to make you aware of something. Do you remember what I said a couple of weeks ago on, obviously, at the end of the third, coming up to the end of the third hour, what, obviously, my situation I mentioned about, if uh, you recall? Uh, are you talking about uh, your your family situation or, or something different? Yeah, I am. My family situation. Okay, yeah, I do remember. I, I do remember. What's going on, man? Well, at least I can say one thing. I can finally say I found peace. I can at least say that. Well, that's good to hear there, Raiden Snake. I know you were pretty, uh, uh, you know, a little emotional. I mean, that's what, you know, normal for anybody who is uh, suffering from a situation of that nature. So uh, you've got your, uh, uh, you, you, you're pretty much at peace, you say. Yeah, I am, yeah. Because cause obviously, I don't want to go into too many details, but let's just say all the arrangements that obviously have been done and dusted now, to put it simple. 
I understand. Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you are in better spirits. And as I've always stated, uh, it's unfortunate fact of life that uh, uh, we all we all perish, and it's uh, it's something that we just have to understand. It's not necessarily something you can be emotionless about, uh, but it's definitely something that uh, nothing none of us can control. So I'm glad that you're at peace, and I'm glad that you're in better spirits at this point in time, man. Yeah. Oh, by the way, um, Karas can just sent me um, an actual article that which is quite interesting. He, he's just missed, He's just skyped me. Apparently, Donald Trump tries to woo Colorado Republicans with iconic Sarah Palin. Apparently, and this is obviously mentioned in the Guardian. I can tweet it to you if you like. Well, oh, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear. It. Hey, you know, stay right there, Raiden Snake. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I, that's one thing I did not want to hear. I, I know what you're talking about. I saw it. I don't want to hear any reference to Sarah Palin being a vice presidential pick for freaking Donald Trump. I mean, I I literally would end the show if if Donald Trump uh, he picks Sarah Palin as the nominee. I'm not kidding around, man. I'm serious because he might as well give the goddamn freaking presidency to Hillary Rotten Clinton. I'm serious. I mean, look, you can use her as a surrogate. She can go out for you, you know, campaign, whatever the hell, whatever. But by God, Trump, please do not pick this stupid Alaska Eskimo bimbo as your goddamn vice presidential candidate. I, I'm serious. Please don't. I'll end this show, and I'll never come back. I'm serious. I'm not, I'm not kidding around. I'm not kidding. Not gonna sit here and you know uh, continue to conduct all this work. I mean, look at this. I, I, what I'm doing is work. I'm trying to make sure Trump is elected. But let me tell you, Trump. I, I don't believe he's gonna do this. But I, I'm telling you that there's been entirely too much pandering in the direction of Sarah Palin, and I'm sick of it. I'm sick of this bimbo. I'm sick of seeing her. I mean, look, folks, I'm going to be completely honest with you. The whole reason why I don't like this woman is because she should have never have been a governor. She should have never have been taken serious as a legitimate member of society. Uh, and, folks, the reason is is because she can't answer a simple question as what media outlets do you read? I mean, she can't answer simple questions without being stumbling and mumbling and saying, um, all of them. Who's your favorite forefather? Um, all of them. I mean, you know what that does to other women that are more than mentally capable and have way more intellectual curiosity than Sarah Palin, but because they don't have uh, Sarah Palin's looks and her uh, wink, winking eye and, and all those other uh, seductive, dumb, stupid bimbo tactics that pretty much got her to the position that she's in, they're going to be completely overlooked, you know? And I think that's what feminists, even though they're more worried about, uh, you know, ridiculous muff diving and all this other crap, that's what they should be focused on. I think feminists should be pissed at Sarah Palin, all right? I'm not joking. I mean, they should be pissed at the fact that this woman is a complete dunce, a complete moron, and yet she was propelled to the position to potentially be the vice presidential candidate or the vice president of a potential presidential candidate in a presidency, an American presidency. I mean, folks, this is what pisses me off about Sarah Palin is the fact that she completely makes every one of us that are on the right of the political perspective like look like idiots, look like complete morons. I'm serious. And, and you know what, folks? Everybody who follows this woman, all the so-called evangelicals who think this woman is like a great patriot or something – I mean, it just undermines the whole idea of being on the right of the political perspective. Because, folks, this woman is an idiot, all right? She's an imbecile. I mean, anyone who, whose first response is all of them, you know? Oh, what's your favorite news outlet to get your news from? Um, I read a lot. Well, name one. Um, I, I like all of them. 
Can you name me your favorite forefather? Um, I, I like all of them. I mean, that's your classic bimbo response to uh, let me go ahead and say this so we can move on to another subject matter so I don't show that I'm an incompetent dumb dunce. And you see, I cannot, for the life of me, ever consider Sarah Palin any kind of legitimate member of the political spectrum. In my personal opinion, she needs to go back to Alaska and go, uh, whatever those people do in Alaska, man, go hunt uh, for pelts or, you know, animal pelts or whatever the hell these people do in Alaska. I don't care, all right? I just don't want her the vice presidential candidate of Dad Donald Trump. You know, y'all are getting me a little upset on this vault. I'm going to tell you right now, uh, this 4th of July broadcast, and now that I'm starting to think a little bit about this, about Donald Trump and about uh, Sarah Palin, for Christ's sake, I, uh, I don't even want to think about it, man. I don't even want to think about it. Oh, my God. Anyway, let's move on to it. Let, let's just get to freaking radio graffiti, for Christ's sake. I'm tired of this crap, all right? Anyway, folks, uh, we got about uh, – how many more minutes? We got about 25 minutes left. Let's go ahead and uh, get to radio graffiti for all the folks that are keeping track of the broadcast or have never listened to the broadcast. Radio graffiti is the part of the broadcast where the spectators become a part of the spectacle. All you have to do is give me a call right now at 516-453-9903. And when I call on your area code, you've got exactly three to four seconds to say whatever, whatever it is that's on your mind. All right? And if you can't get through, folks, keep trying. I'm going to try to get through as many radio graffiti calls as I possibly can on this 4th of July edition of the True Capitalist Radio Broadcast. And, folks, I do not think I will have a third hour. Uh, I think it's military time, for Christ's sake. It's 4th of July. I feel like having some uh, now beers and burgers or doing something American out here. Uh, I feel like uh, waving a flag, you know, the American flag around this damn liberal shithole out here in Austin, Texas, uh, and see if uh, I get arrested or some kind of crap because I'm offending, uh, you know, a bunch of camel jockeys or whatever the case might be. Anyway, folks, I want to get to radio graffiti. Hey, uh, engineer, do we have any radio graffiti calls for Christ's sake? <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and get to radio graffiti right now. <laughs> How about area code five two zero radio graffiti? Hey guys, I'm celebrating the Fourth of July as the entrance into the United Kingdom. Death to America and glory to Scotland. Yeah, just shut up, you stupid shithead. All right, now you dumb, stupid leprechaun sounding fruit. How about area code uh, 956, Radio Graffiti? Hi, guys. Happy July 4th. And I want to tell you something. I heard something about, uh, let me see, Hillary Clinton. Okay, well, do you know, do you know about AVGN? What's that? Do you know about AVGN? What is that? Oh, he's a gamer who like reviews bad video games. Well, apparently uh, he was talking about Ghostbusters because, well, he is like the geek of culture. Like right? he's like the best guy to know about video games and like culture. And um, he was he didn't he want to see uh, Ghostbusters, so uh, the new one. So uh, people would call him that he's like sexist, but this guy's inspired people and inspired to become capitalists like. Buying video games to sell them for money, like a lot of money. And, uh, okay, so um, the new girls from the Ghostbusters. Um, okay, a lot of people are telling that he's a sexist, but he's not. And so uh, Harry Clinton, she's supporting the new Ghostbusters. And, uh, well, uh, you know, how quaint that she's supporting the new Ghostbusters, all right? I mean, who else would support... Uh, a, a revamp of the Ghostbusters with a bunch of fatties and uglies, for Christ's sake. I mean, come on, Hollywood. I mean, don't you have the Hollywood one? Why are you trying to shove a bunch of fatties and uglies at, at me uh, in the Ghostbusters 2 movie, for Christ's sake, man? And could you get any more stereotypical with the black broad that they brought in there? I'm just saying. I mean, you know, only Hollywood can be uh, blatantly racist without anybody saying a goddamn thing about it. You know what I'm saying? 
like Precious. Y'all remember that movie Precious where that fat broad does a fried chicken run? I've talked about that countless times, for Christ's sake. If you didn't see that uh, stupid little scene in that movie, by God, do a damn YouTube search. Huh? This fat, disgusting broad does a fried chicken run. So, yeah, good going, Hollywood. Anyway, 213, Radio Graffiti. Celebrate your 4th of July in style with a little help from your friendly neighborhood Albertsons. Get great deals on festive favorites for a memorable holiday gathering. For a delicious cookout, stop by the meat department and pick up fresh, boneless, skinless chicken breasts or thighs, just $1.59 a pound when you buy three pounds or more. And get local red or green seedless grapes for only 88 cents a pound. Tastier meats, sweeter produce, better celebrations. Albertsons, it's just better. Hello, 213, you're on there. Oh, Jesus Christ, Helen Keller, deaf mutes. How about uh, 484 Radio Graffiti? Uh, shut up, you stupid Ruski. We're not, we're, don't even go there. How about 620 Radio Graffiti? Uh, well, whatever the hell that was, for Christ's sake. 337 Radio Graffiti. <laughs> Oh, that was a major fail, for Christ's sake. How about Anonymous, Radio Graffiti? Renegade Supreme Dalek, Radio Graffiti. Uh, all right, I, I don't understand what the hell that was about. Uh, how about 609 Radio Graffiti? Uh, you know, what the hell's the big idea, all right? This is the 4th of July, all right? I don't want to hear another national anthem, boy. This is America. You understand me? America. Better be respecting America. Anonymous Radio Graffiti. This is True Franco Radio. True Franco Radio. Welcome to the right field, motherfucker. The Senpai of Indecency. Give him vomit cake or give him that. <coughs> Broadcasting from his apartment in Brooklyn, New York. It's time to stop. No more. Where the fuck are your parents? Who are your parents? Uh, yeah, r- real fun, <laughs> real funny, you idiots. All right, look, I'm I'm telling you this right now. All right, I'm not letting you idiots ruin my Fourth of July. You understand this, boy? This is America's birthday. Happy birthday, America! All right, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to. trying to make me sound like a goddamn tart again, is that it? Huh? You son of a bitch. Shut up! Who the hell else do we got? 903 Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost, I just wanted to thank you. Because of you, I invested in butter and anxiety medication. I made 15% on my return. Shut up! Shut up! It's not the butter, assholes! Stop it! We got anonymous Radio Graffiti. 
Boot 073, Radio Graffiti. I don't want to hear another national anthem.
we got going on over here, for Christ's sake. Uh, we got area code uh, 269, Radio Graffiti. Happy 4th of July. Failure in Vietnam, failure in Iraq, and failure in Afghanistan. Rest in peace, America. I mean, was, is that supposed to be funny, or are you just trying to think that you're shocking with that fruit bowl voice? A little bit of both. Yeah, well, it's not working, all right? I'm telling you, your mother should be punched in their panocha, and, and, and hopefully she uh, is no longer able to make any more fruit bowl kids like yourself. 862 Radio Graffiti. Oh, say can you see by my cock's early rise what so proudly I felt at my fat cock's last chasing whose broad semen... Uh, I'm, not, I'm not letting you finish that, you son of a bitch. All right? I hope you get cancer of the cock. How about that, you stupid milky liquor? How about anonymous radio graffiti? This is True Communist Radio. True Communist Radio. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. The badass of collective funds. Give him communism or give him death. I'm communist. I'm Sophie Hitch. I deserve the respect accorded that title. Broadcasting live from his beautiful skyline office in downtown Pyongyang, North Korea. I am going to stop. And now he'll take it from here. Your host, the chairman of all chairmen, the man they call. You goddamn communist bitch! You fucking commies! You damn commies!
This is my 4th of July! This is mine, and you idiots have ruined it! You've ruined my 4th of July, for Christ's sake! Screw you! Screw you! Screw you! guy knows not to judge a man by his car's multicolor paint job or absence of modern gadgetry. Who cares if it's technically old enough to vote and the windows are powered by the strength of your left arm? Your monthly payment is zero, and it'll stay that way. Because with over 400,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, you can keep anything on the road. She may not be pretty, but she's all yours. That's Napa know-how. I just can't take it anymore. 
these liberals, these Democrats, these career bureaucrats, the stupidity, the retarded American electorate. I just can't take it. I 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 can't take this crap. Give me the mic. Give me the mic. I can't take this crap. I'm getting the hell out of here, folks, all right? This is a 4th of July edition. You people have ruined it. You've ruined it. You've ruined my 4th of July, and I'm not letting you ruin it anymore. I'm not letting you ruin it anymore. I'm getting the hell out of here. Stick a goddamn fork in me. I'm done. You'll be lucky if I do come back tomorrow, I'll tell you that for Christ's sake. You're ruining my 4th of July, you scumbag! Anyway, folks, I'm getting the hell out of here. Stupid sons of bitches. Blogtalkradio.com slash ghost is the official website of the goddamn show. Blogtalkradio.com slash ghost is the official website. And follow me on Twitter, all right? Politics Ghost is the name to follow. All one goddamn word, no underscores. Politics Ghost, all right? And make sure you at least, if you're going to be a troll terrorist, cyber vermin, scumbag, at least you can spread it around like wildfire and let everybody you know that True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house. We are live every Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. So spread it around like wildfire. I am out. I am out. I am out. Happy birthday, America, and happy 4th of July. Long live the capitalist army. Fios is not cable. We're wired differently, which means you can get the fastest Internet available with equal upload and download speeds from 50 to 500 megs. So you can upload 200 photos before your favorite song is finished. Click the ad and switch to Fios today to get our best offer ever. Fios is not cable. We're wired differently, which means you can get the fastest Internet available with equal upload and download speeds from 50 to 500 megs. So you can upload 200 photos before your favorite song is finished. Click the ad and switch to files today to get our best offer ever.